I'm now unmuted. I'm Kim. Well, Kilpatrick. I'm here too. I'm, I'm back, here. Kim. So good. So um, I'm Kim Kilpatrick. I have been a Braille user and reader since I was tiny, and uh, I'm totally blind. And I um, I help run the Get Together with Technology program to CCB. I'm also the on the board of Braille Literacy. I'm the secretary, and I'm the chair of the Braille Com Promotions Committee, which is the committee that organizes the workshops. So I'm very doubly glad that you're all here. Um, I have used iDevices since about 2010, I think. And I, I've played with Braille screen input since it first came out, but it certainly, I didn't use it as widely as I do now. Um, so go ahead, Leo. Well, hello everyone, uh, Leo, Dr. Leo Bissonnette. I'm glad to be with you from Montreal, Beaconsfield, Quebec. Um, I've been a Braille user, gosh, now for some 60 years plus. Um, I started uh, back, I guess, in about 1960, 61, with a pocket guide and stylus and worked my way up to a Perkins Braille writer that I got in 1966. And then I was one of the first Braille, Versa Braille users in the early 80s, if some of you might remember the old Versa Brailles that were cassette-based driven ones. I had one too. They were awesome. I had one too. <laughs> yeah. And I've evolved from there. And of course, at a certain point, about uh, maybe seven or eight years ago, became an iPhone user and uh, a Braille display user with the various devices now. So at some point, uh, Braille screen input was another tool to put in the toolkit. And uh, I think to note, when it first came out, it was frustrating to use, but it's improved. And I think that's one of the points we want to make today, that uh, Braille screen input is indeed a tool that one can use. So what we're going to do today is hopefully, uh, for some who are new to it, acquaint them with what it is. And for those who are the veterans around here, we're all going to learn from each other already. I've heard a few things come up and even a few questions come up. So it's clear that we have a wide range of people here today. So let's get down to it. The first thing I, we sh should talk about is enabling Braille screen input. And I think it's interesting to note because I believe we have one Android user here. Braille screen input on the iPhone side is easier. It's built in to the phone, but all you have to do is turn it on. In the Android world, you have to go out and find it. So we're a little bit ahead of the game on the iPhone side or the iPad side. So when you first get a new device, as I just said, input is not enabled by default. And to enable it, you do the following, and we are gonna give you some notes in the recording, but I think just to take you through what's involved, uh, just listen to what I'm gonna do or talk about. And if somebody wants to try it later when we get the questions, we can take you through it. So the first thing you wanna do is to go into settings. And once you're in settings, you go to accessibility. It's like you're going down in layers. And then you go to voiceover. And then you go to rotor. Now, the rotor is the fun part, but we're not gonna cover rotor because I'm gonna assume for now that most of you know how to deal with the rotor. When you get there, you double tap on Braille screen input, and you make sure that it, it says something like selected. And at that point, if all that's worked successfully, you've got it started. Kim? So after you've done that, Braille screen input will be in your rotor so that when you're in an edit field, and it won't show up unless you're in an edit field, when you're in an edit field, it will show up there if you turn your rotor. But I, before you go into a document, there are a few other things in settings you can customize. Um, so in your settings, um, you can go to accessibility as you did uh, with Leo and into voiceover, but then in, after you come out of the rotor, you look for Braille settings. And then when that's open, you look for Braille screen input. 
as you can set your braille to contracted or uncontracted braille for when you're typing in braille screen input. So I know we have some adult um, braille learners here that might be just getting started. So if you were learning your letters, you could set it to uncontracted braille, type a dot one and, and a space and it would say a or dot one four, it would say C. So it's a good way of knowing. And if you're just starting to learn your contracted braille, you can change the setting to that and then you can um, you can see how you're doing. So you can change that, and you can also change it on the fly, which we'll show you. Um, so that's where you're opening to in Braille settings. It might say Braille screen input six dot, which means uncontracted. Um, uncontracted six dot or contracted. But on the iPad, there's also computer braille, uncontracted eight dot braille, computer braille, but that's not there in the iPhone. So after you've made your selection there, you go back out of um, braille, uh, out of the um, contracted braille, you go back out of the braille. And then still in braille settings, you wanna set the code. Um, so the code is how it's going to translate your Braille. So from within Braille settings, you find Braille code, and VoiceOver will say which code it is. Um, Unified English Braille, UEB, which should be the default, and we sort of recommend you keep it there. Um, it's called English Unified, is VoiceOver, because um, UEB is adopted in Canada, so... We'll urge you to leave it there, but you can uh, use English, un uh, English Unified, as we said, U.S. or United Kingdom, U.K. Once you've made your choice, uh, you go back out of that Braille setting. So Leo's going to tell you something else in settings you should change before you start using Braille screen input. Now, the next thing that we you can play with and set is typing feedback. You can set in the, in the amount of typing feedback you get in Braille by doing several things. So again, from within the voiceover setting, you would double tap on input uh, typing feedback rather, and uh, you would look specifically then, you would find that there were four options before you. You have no feedback at all. You can have character feedback, word feedback, or characters and words. And again, it's user preference. You can set it as you wish. So that's important. I guess, you know, it's, it's your own personal preference. Take it from there. Um, and I guess at this point, Kim, do you want to continue on here with uh, the fun parts of yeah, ways so. of typing using Braille screen input? That's right. So um, I'll just say that for Braille screen input, I have mindset to characters and words typing because as we were saying just before we got started a little bit, sometimes your fingers get off kilter. Um, so I do, I don't usually have other keyboard typing settings, like for, for a Braille display, I do not have it. I have it set to words and same with the keyboard, but for Braille screen input, I do find it helpful. I don't know what Leo does, what you do, Leo, but I find it helpful to have it set to tell me both characters and words. I'm the same way too. I like yeah. it that way. So once you go to an edit field and you turn your rotor, so the rotor turning gesture is that little gesture with your fingertips like you're turning a dial, but now you can customize those for other gestures if you find that one hard. And you hear Braille screen input. There are two ways of using Braille screen input. Um, and we were starting to talk about this in a heated way just before because everyone has their preference. Um, there's called tabletop and screen away. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about tabletop, the best way I can explain it. 
I always used tabletop at the beginning because I didn't like to hold my phone up. So as soon as it was flat, it went into tabletop. So I did use it, but now you can lock it in whichever formation you, you prefer. So even when my mine is flat now, I tend to use screen away mode, which Leo is going to describe. But in tabletop mode, the phone is flat on a table or held in your hands and don't, not rocking in a chair as Marilyn showed us that that doesn't always help with your typing abilities. Um, the And what happens when you first turn your rotor to Braille screen input, your phone is going to automatically go into landscape mode. So I don't know, uh, um, a lot of totally blind people like me lock our phone in portrait mode. So when, when we turn it, it's not swinging around. But Braille screen input will put you right into landscape mode. So that means you turn the phone sideways from your usual flick gestures put it down or hold it the way you want to hold it. And um, then the dots are organized like a Perkins keyboard. But on tabletop mode, it almost feels like your hands are in a V shape. So your two index fingers are finding dots one and four, but they, they're a bit closer together than your middle fingers, which are a bit closer together than your uh, ring fingers, which are three and six. So it, it feels a little unusual to any of us who have used Perkins keyboards where the keys are straight and flat. Um, so that's the way it is. It feels like to me anyway, um, when I used, when I've used that, that, that V shape and I found my fingers did not always uh, calibrate as well for that myself. Um, but Leo had given me a really good tip to say that he calibrates every single time. He, ha he calibrates every single time that he starts. And I know Joe was saying at the beginning, sometimes calibrations go off. And every time he turns it to Braille screen, he'll calibrate. And um, he, we're going to tell you how to do that in a minute. But that's what uh, the tabletop mode feels like, that kind of like a V. So Leo's going to tell you about screen away mode now. Thanks, Kim. Screen away mode is the way I like it. And I suspect from what I heard earlier, just in the chit chat, a lot of people like it too. And I'm going to try and describe it hopefully clearly. And I, I'd say it this way. If you tip the phone so that the screen is facing away from you, with the phone still in landscape orientation, as Kim has nicely described, you go into screen away mode, and that's, that's the big thing. And in this mode, the dots are arranged vertically at the ends of the phone. And at the end of the phone, you write your, your braille with your, your three fingers of each hand curled around the phone. I hope that's clear. If it's not, we're certainly we can go through it again. Your index fingers are braille's, uh, braille dots one and four. Your middle fingers are dots two and five. And the ring finger are, are dots three and six. And again, I hope that's clear. Uh, now, once you make your choice about either screen away or tabletop, you can lock your phone in either choice once you've made it. To do this, uh, when you're in the mode that you like best, swipe up, swipe up with three fingers and you will be locked in whatever mode you have chosen. And it stays there. You can change it. You're not locked in forever. So now with that basic uh, overview, Kim will talk about now how you can exit Braille screen input mode. So I just also want to mention quickly that um, some people thought that you do one finger at a time like you would with a slate punching one dot at a time, but you do type with all the fingers of a letter at the same time. So one, four, five for D, like just, just to be clear, because someone I was helping once was trying to do them one dot at a time, and that's not the way you do it. Um, so 
once you've typed what you want, and we're going to go through some of the key commands for for spaces and new lines, um, how do you get out of it? Because you can be in there, and all of a sudden you're in there, and you're still in landscape mode. And when you're in Braille screen input, no other gestures, the usual ones, like the flick right with one finger, is going to give you a space. So it's, it's not... Um, it's not the same. So you have to get out of it in order to do anything with your text or to do other things too. So you can do it in three ways. Um, if you turn your rotor in either direction, it takes you out of Braille screen input. That's the one I tend to use because it's the quickest. So I just turn my rotor and then I'm back. My phone is locked again in portrait. And the text is on my screen, but it's in the usual uh, orientation that I'm used to. Say I was sending a text message to Jen, that text will be there. And, and if I swipe right, the send button will be there. So you can do it that way. You can do the two finger scrub gesture, which is a usual gesture for going back. So you take two fingers as if you're cleaning your phone and you wipe them back and forth a couple of times and that will take you out. Or a two-finger swipe up to go to the next keyboard. I have not tried this, um, but it's in the list of ways you can do it. Have you done that, Leo, the next keyboard? No, I, I, I don't do that, but I did note it as we were preparing this in case somebody needed to get the complete picture of what, was, what the options were. To me, the easiest one is to I do use the, the rotor. Myself. Yeah, uh, is to do, oh, so he uses the scrub and I use the rotor. So whatever you feel most comfortable with um, and you'll know that you've exited braille screen input when you hear your iPhone say portrait uh, mode especially if you have it locked in so uh, now Leo's going to give us a few important tips about braille screen input thanks Kim now as you see they're almost these are miscellaneous under the miscellaneous category but if you are not sure where you are. And I'd say this is particularly helpful maybe if you're just starting to play with the uh, Braille screen in, input. You can take your finger, rest it on the screen, just one finger, and you will hear voiceover beep twice and then say in exploring mode. You now can slide your finger around the screen and each dot that it, you, your finger passes over will be spoken to you. So it's, it's a one little way of getting some sense of what's happening. And when you want to get out of uh, the exploring mode, you simply take your finger off the screen and it's done, you're back into whatever. Now, I think this is where we get into the calibration mode. I like to use it anytime I start off a session. Uh, with your right hand, you're doing dots four, five, six. And with your left hand, you're doing dots one, two, three. And once that properly configures itself, you will get a confirmation saying that your position has been confirmed. I like that because uh, it, I have found that sometimes it just doesn't work. Um, so it's, it's just a little thing I do. Some people say you don't need to do it. It's just my thing. Um, so I guess those are some of the, the big things. Uh, you can do some, some of these things too on the iPad and we can talk more about the iPad if you wish uh, a little later uh, because I, you can double tap uh, six dots on the iPad and uh, that uh, gets things working nicely. Um, so I, I guess I'll, I'll leave you with those few under that category and I'll turn it back to Kim who will talk about a few other things that are exciting to do uh, with your Braille screen input. Well, one thing I will say, when you calibrate, you have to do the two gestures with the two hands very quickly, because if you pause you between your happen. four, five, six, one, two, three, it'll say four, five, six, or it'll say L. So you go tap, tap, yeah. like four, five, six, one, two, three, tap, tap. I don't know about the iPad. The iPad, it says you can touch all six simultaneously and maybe you have to lift them up fast. I didn't, I didn't really Double know, tap and it's, it should work. I don't have an iPad. I just, again, reference that in what I try to prepare for today. Um, now, this brings up a point that Leo has here about the, um, 
doing a full cell character in. Oh, yes. Uh, Shall I take that on? And I, I have yeah. to tell you, let's get confession over first. I don't, everything I'm telling you, I don't do. I cheat. The FOR sign is the six dot combination that I find troublesome. I think everybody does too. Now, it, supposedly you can get around it if, for example, if you braille the letter Y and keep, like in other words, dots one, three, four, five, six, and then with the slide, take one finger off one of the dots, say move your finger that's on dot one to the dot two position, and then lift it up, you've got the FOR done. I miss it more times than not, so I cheat and I write FOR. Yeah, so but do I. But in case you wanted to know how to do it, that's how you can do it. It's, uh, for me, it's a hit or miss deal, but I wanted to share that with you. So you can use Braille screen input anywhere where you can input text. So if you are on your home screen, for example, and you want to find and open an app, there's a search, um, uh, go to the Braille screen input uh, rotor from anywhere in your home screen and just begin typing the name of the app you want to find in uncontracted Braille. So if I was looking for mail, I would write M-A and um, then voiceover announces how many matches it's found. So that is very handy. I used to, I, I do put up things in all kinds of folders and then I forget what folder I put things in. So I do find that very nice uh, for searching for things within the home screen. Um, and then you just turn your rotor and then you just tap the app you want. Um, you can flick up or down with one finger to find them you can flick right to, to launch it. Um, but usually sometimes I just sort of turn it and then um, get into it that way. You can use Braille screen input to enter your password or your passcode on your phone. So once you wake up your phone, either by pressing your, um, your side button, if you have one of the newer phones or your home button or your fake home button, um, you turn the rotor to Braille screen input, and then you must put a number sign if you're gonna enter numbers of your passcode. And again, you can't use a contracted Braille, I don't think, at least I haven't been able to do it if anyone does. If you've op entered your passcode correctly, like your, your six, six digit or four digit, um, your phone will automatically unlock as you type the last character. Um, so, um, also you can use it, of course, in any text field. So for notes, for mail, messages, um, I haven't used it for putting in phone numbers if you were going to call with the phone, but I'm imagining you can do that and like, people can comment on that. Uh, other places where they found it really useful, uh, some people use it only when they're out and when they're home, they'll use uh, a keyboard or they'll use their, uh, you know, other devices or a Braille display. Some people, I, I use it a lot when I'm out or when I'm on a train or a bus or something where I don't want to have a, a Braille display. I, when was the last time I took a bus? I don't know, but <laughs> I don't have a Braille display out. Um, it can be really useful to use it. And, and the more you use it, the faster you really get. And I know Tom Decker has that, and I know other people. And I, I was once texting at the same time as a sighted person, and I was faster than they were because I was using contracted Braille. So um, Braille screen input has its own set of gestures. And uh, we're just going to go through, I'm going to go through a few of them just to get you started. Um, so once you're in your Braille screen input screen, the space, so you write a word and you want a space, it's a one finger flick right. So that does a space. Um, delete the last characters of one finger flick left. So it's easy to remember those because I always think of one character right, which is a space, is one finger flick right. And delete one character finger flick left is the delete. Um, to delete the last word, that's a two-finger flick left. So that's very handy if you're typing and 
you missed a word or you put in something. Um, and to make a new line is a two finger flick right. So again, word left and the new line right. So space is one right and the new line is two right. It makes really good sense. If you're in um, a Braille screen input and you want to cycle between your modes of Braille, so your contracted, your six dot or your contracted Braille, it's a three finger swipe to the left. So it'll say Braille input six dot, Braille input contracted. So if you're a new Braille learner, and you want to try contract it or you want to do something or if you need to put in numbers and you want to do it in six dot or if there's some reason why you can easily do that on the fly. Um, to lock the orientation for the braille screen input, you put it into the orientation you want. So flat on the table if you want tabletop or tilted away from you with the back of the phone close to your body and the screen out if you want screen away. And when you are in that position you want, three finger flick up and that means um, if, that means, yeah, so flick up towards the, the other side of your phone when it's in the orientation, uh, when it's in landscape. So that is a very handy gesture. Um, Leo, have you done, we've written here, cycle through alternative spelling suggestions. I have not tried this one finger flick up or down, so it'd be really interesting to hear from others um, I in the chat. I haven't used it either, yeah. So, I haven't used it, but I wanted people to know that it was there. Yeah, so that's all we have. I know it's not a hugely long presentation, but um, do you have anything else, Leo? And then, or we'll go to questions now. Well, I think the the only comment that I would make is that, in terms of how I use it, I use it uh, often when I'm writing a text message, sometimes short emails. I have written uh, the odd document uh, with it. What I mean, a document, a letter, or something like that. Um, I have on occasion uh, filled in a, in a, an emergency situation for as a re, uh, secretary at meetings and I've done some uh, note taking that way. Um, so that's, but it's usually when I'm out or in those other contexts where I'm using text messaging and emails. And uh, I guess when I have the option of a braille uh, display, I like to use that. Yeah, I but prefer- it's another tool. I prefer the Braille display if I'm taking notes in a meeting so I can hear, I can have speech totally off and I can yeah. hear. Um, but I mean, there are times where it, either you, you haven't, you can't afford one, you don't have one, you are just starting Braille. So you're trying to learn it. That's another way to learn it. I know in some of the last Braille Zoomer calls, we talked about the more you can use it, the better. So this would be a really good way to practice your, the knowing what the characters are and knowing how to write Braille um, on the screen. So uh, I use it for, similar to Leo, I use it when I'm out. I use it um, for shorter things, although I have written a whole document with it when it's kind of handy if if you do have a Braille device and it doesn't work or the battery loses charge or something, you can easily, you can do it. And it's, it's really quite accurate and fast. Uh, so uh, that's all I think I'd like to say for now and maybe now.